On a cool and rainy day, if you have the time, there's nothing quite like making stew in the traditional way. Here's how you do it. So there are two important things to think about when you're gonna make stew. And one is the pot that you're gonna use. You want a nice heavy gauge pot with a tight fitting lid and one that can go into the oven. The second important thing is of course what piece of meat you're gonna use. Here I've got a piece of chuck roast. Really flavorful, but it's tough. So it's gonna need some time to break down and become tender. We're gonna cut this up ourselves and I'm gonna cut them into chunks that are bigger than you think you need. It's going to shrink as you cook it. Those pieces of meat are gonna become smaller. We want them bite-sized when the stew is finished, so we're gonna start bigger than bite-sized as we're starting the stew. So we're gonna go about two inch chunks here for our beef stew. Let's get some heat underneath this pan. Now I'm gonna to go to a medium high heat. Because this is a cast iron pan, it's gonna take a minute to get nice and warm. So let that sit. This is not a part of the stew that we're gonna rush. So once your pan is nice and hot, we're gonna add some olive oil a fair amount of olive oil here, and as soon as you put it into that hot pan, you should see it start to move. That's telling you the pan is hot, now the oil is hot, we're ready to brown the beef. Now the most important thing here is not to overcrowd the pan. If you put too much beef in at one time, you're gonna get liquid in the bottom of the pan. It's not gonna be browning, it's gonna be stewing already in its own juices. So we wanna see the bottom of the pan still, even while the beef is in there. We're gonna let that cook, we're gonna season it with some salt and pepper, we're gonna do this in batches. It's gonna take some time, but it's important steps to be patient. So once your beef is browned on all sides, you see some good color there, you know it's time to move it to that batch of browned beef bowl. And now we're gonna focus on the other part, the most important part of a beef stew, aside from the meat, is the sauce. So we've got beautiful browning on the bottom of that pot and we're gonna use all that flavor in our sauce. First thing we're gonna do is add some onion. Now whatever vegetables you add to the pot right now are gonna be pretty mushy by the time your stew's finished because this beef stew has to cook for at least two hours. So we're not adding carrots and potatoes and things like that now. We're adding onion and garlic which is gonna give flavor to our sauce. So let's saute this for just a couple minutes. You're gonna see it start to bring all that brown up off the bottom of the pot. We're gonna add another flavor component. Every time you add an ingredient to the stew, you should be adding flavor. And what we're gonna add here is some tomato paste. Tomato paste is really just concentrated, concentrated tomato flavor. It's always nice to brown it a little bit first and even concentrate it more. So I can see what's happening here in this pot right now and it's starting to get a little dark on the bottom. So let's skip over to the next step, which is adding some red wine. Now when we add that red wine, that's gonna cool the pan down a little bit and we're gonna be able to bring all of that delicious browning off the bottom. It's really important when you add your wine that it's a wine that you would drink. And I say that not just because you're probably not gonna use the whole bottle in the cooking, but because if you don't like the flavor of an ingredient by itself, you shouldn't be putting it into something that you're gonna finish cooking. This has picked up so much of that browning. The color has changed completely. It's already becoming that deep, rich sauce that we want with our stew. We're gonna put a bay leaf in. We're gonna put some dried rosemary and some dried thyme in here. And then we're going to add some Worcestershire sauce. That's gonna give us another whole level of flavor. And I'm gonna add some stock. Now I've got three cups of stock here. I'm only gonna add two cups right now. I'm saving that other cup of stock because depending on how you're gonna cook this stew, you could cook it in the oven and you're gonna have very little evaporation. If you cook it on the stove top at a very low simmer, you'll have a little more evaporation and you might wanna add some stock later on. But let's put our beef meat back in here now. Remember, we're making a stew, not a soup, so we do not need to cover the meat with liquid, but have a little bit of the meat poking up the top there. I'm gonna season it one more time with some salt. We're gonna cover it with that tight fitting lid and we're going to either put this into an oven at 275 degrees or we're gonna simmer it on the stove top. You don't want to be boiling your stew. That's gonna end up with tough meat. We wanna have a nice low simmer. If you have a thermometer, you're looking for about 180 degrees. Otherwise, you're just looking for a few bubbles here and there. So once that meat has been gently simmering for about an hour, it's time to add the vegetables that we want in our stew. We're making a very basic stew here today, but you can feel free to make this your own. 
What are you in the mood for? If you like root vegetables, add turnips, parsnips. Today, it's a basic stew. We're adding some carrots and we're gonna add some potatoes. I've left them in kind of big chunks because this is now going to cook for another hour. We're gonna give it a stir and, uh, and let that go either in the oven at 275 or on the stove top, again, at that gentle, gentle simmer. So as we're approaching the end of our second hour of simmering our stew, I'm gonna start to saute some vegetables to put in the stew. Now, I'm gonna add some pearl onions. They're a classic ingredient in a basic stew, but I don't wanna boil my onions. Remember, there were onions at the very beginning to give our sauce flavor. These are gonna be onions that we're gonna enjoy and wanna eat. I'm gonna saute them in a little bit of olive oil on the stove top in a separate pan, get some nice color on them so they're pretty, and then put them into the stew. But I always go a little darker when I'm adding vegetables to a stew because once they get into the liquid, the color fades a little bit. So nice dark color on those onions. I'm gonna add them right to our simmering stew just to get all those flavors blended. Give it a good stir and get the pieces of meat that were not submerged down to the bottom and let this go gently simmering, making that house smell beautiful for another half hour. It's time to see if our stew is ready. Let's check the meat and make sure the meat is nice and tender. So I'm just gonna pull out a piece. Oh, it looks great. It looks beautiful. It's falling apart with just a fork. That's what I wanna see. I'm gonna put in some frozen peas. All they have to do is heat through, which will take just a couple minutes. I'm gonna season it with some parsley as well for color. This is gonna make a lot of people very, very happy. That is a happy bowl of stew. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more of the basics, click over here. If you'd like to see everything I use for the recipe, click over here. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for more basics, put them in the comments section below.